What is up YouTube? In today's video, we're gonna cover um, one of my favorite uh, framework and tool called PySpark. So yeah, I'm mainly gonna cover uh, setting up uh, the environment. So if you are a data scientist or a data engineer or just curious about the technology, uh, this is like uh, the first place to start at. Uh, I'm gonna cover multiple different options where you can go about uh, setting up this PySpark environment and kind of help you scale your uh, data engineering slash data science jobs and also help you build models. So yeah, let's just get started with the video and see what we have on our plate. All right, moving on to the topic. Let's quickly briefly go through what exactly PySpark is because we are talking about it. <laughs> so I, I'll start with the phrase mainly, I'm gonna say like what uh, Pandas is to data science, uh, it's kind of in a similar way, PySpark is to data engineering. So basically PySpark allows you to kind of use uh, Spark. Spark is, a, is a, another framework based on Scala language. Basically allows you to do uh, data processing uh, in a very effective way, very efficiently. Kind of doing it in, in a distributed computing fashion. Uh, and basically kind of helps you scale a lot. So hence the, the, the bigger pipelines. So Python is a language which like has all these like different libraries which helps you, which enables you kind of build all these models, different types of models and uh, do different type of data processing, uh, like different libraries like scikit-log, TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, all these libraries are very easy to use in Python. So all this data ecosystem kind of comes together and Python is the center point. And that's where PySpark is, uh, is one of the main core uh, part of it, which helps you build super scalable pipelines and um, Yep, and handle like uh, all this processing in parallel uh, across multiple threads and also across uh, uh, multiple computers. So it helps you in like distributedly scaling all your jobs. So one of the key questions uh, a lot of people would ask like why why data scientists would uh, should be eager to learn something like Spark. Uh, uh, I would say like two points, definitely. Uh, the first would be uh, based on the efficiency. Pandas can kind of lead you to, at a certain extent, uh, like pandas get shorted by when the data is like super huge, uh, when you're trying to do a lot of data processing on big data, and that's where like the uh, Spark kind of uh, is a game changer in that place. And the second point would be, uh, I would say it's not so different from uh, using pandas. Uh, for someone who has already used pandas a lot, PySpark uh, is not a, a big difference a big difference in in terms of usage, um, it already has the data frame API. Uh, the data frame object is kind of very similar to use what we use in uh, pandas. So I would say uh, not not very different, and um, that's where like uh, every data scientist could easily go about and learn Spark, use it in their jobs, especially when you are aiming to scale it over. Uh, when you have big data sets and that's where it's very important to kind of use this technology. Yep. Moving on to the main part of the video uh, in which we're going to explore all the options available for a PySpark setup. Uh, out of that, I'm going to point out which ones are my favorite uh, as we go along. Uh, so first in my list is setting up PySpark locally on Ubuntu. First thing you have to do is install Java using a apt install. Then after you have installed Java, you can um, you have to download actually Spark from this link. The Spark uh, framework is already there for you to download once you choose the version you want, preferably the latest one. After you click on this link, if you have Ubuntu uh, GUI interface, you can just go there and download from the browser, like what I'm doing right now. Otherwise, if you don't, if you're just using the command line, you can use uh, uh, wget to just uh, use this URL and install it, uh, copy to your local system. So yeah, that's it. Uh, and then after you've done installing this, uh, right now just keep it. And the next step is to kind of enable uh, Java and setting the right uh, environment variables for Java. So what you're gonna do, you have to uh, edit uh, an environment file in e this location and kind of uh, add in the Java home environment variable for it. After you've set up the variable, uh, the next step is to kind of add uh, the path for this environment in the bash rc file. The next part is uh, once you already have wget the, the file of Hadoop or downloaded it through GUI, you need to install it uh, locally. So once you go to the downloads folder or wherever you have installed it, you just need to type in the command uh, sudo tar and open, just unzip this file and kind of install it. So this is gonna enable you install installing Spark on your local. And so after you're done installing Spark, the next step is to 
uh, add in all the environment variables. So what you have to do is just sudo nano bash rc, similarly to what you did previously, and all add in all these Python variables, which kind of points uh, uh, one to do the right direction where Spark exists, where Python exists, and where Anaconda exists, and all these uh, PySpark drivers for accessing Jupyter Notebook and something. And just after you save and exit this environment variable, you to test it out, you just need to type in PySpark. As in for Ubuntu, if you don't have Ubuntu, I just included this small step. Probably if you're using Windows and you want to streamline something, and if you don't have Ubuntu, what you can do, uh, or even if you want to do it on a Mac, you can install VirtualBox. Basically, VirtualBox enables you creating a uh, separate environment a virtual environment within your computer and it takes up your memory, takes up your space as well as uh, your compute, but kind of creates a separate um, uh, sandbox entity of a, a, a new OS with a new virtual machine. So it creates a virtual machine on your locally. So what you have to do, you have to first install VirtualBox from this link, uh, the downloads link. And then after you've installed VirtualBox, uh, you have to install this uh, ISO image. Uh, basically this is uh, like an Ubuntu IOS image. Uh, uh, basically what's going to happen when you install a virtual box, you're going to point it to this image and it kind of replicates this uh, OS environment. So it's like a version of Ubuntu, uh, as an iOS image, it uh, points to this and then kind of installs into the virtual box. Basically, uh, you have to just uh, click next, uh, and select a few options, pass in the desired CPU cores, memory and storage you want to give. And after that, um, once it's done, it's going to take around 20 to 30 minutes in total but it kind of helps you install uh, Ubuntu uh, locally on your system. As in for the next option, it is setting a PySpark locally on a Mac. So basically this method uses Homebrew. Homebrew is like a package manager, which is available on Mac, similarly to uh, what apt-get is for Ubuntu. Uh, you would need to install Java, very similarly what we did uh, on Ubuntu, uh, but it's uh, pretty simple here. You need to do brew install Java. After Java is installed, just check if it's available using brew info Java and uh, then kind of install Scala to br from Brew and then Apache Spark directly. Uh, pretty straightforward because you're just typing in a few commands. Uh, I, in my environment, Python 3 kind of exists, but if, if it's not there, then just do Brew install Python 3. After all these in, uh, in requirements are installed, the next step is to provide the environment variables in the bash RC. Uh, once you open it, you have to provide all these uh, environment variables. So for Java, provide these two and for Spark, provide these two, just pointing the right things in the right direction. That's it. This kind of enables uh, PySpark environment on your Mac. Coming on to the next step, uh, which is like my preferred way of installing uh, a Spark environment, having a ready Spark environment is using Docker. Uh, for someone who is not familiar with uh, Docker, Docker is like an open source platform. Uh, which kind of allows you develop, deploy, and ship application uh, via containers. Basically, there's like a whole new concepts of uh, concept of containers, which kind of Docker introduces. It lies above the OS level, but then it kind of allows you to package uh, all the requirements and everything in one place as a as a container image, and then you just quickly deploy it easily. And the best part about using Docker is basically Docker's community. So the community kind of creates all these uh, different types of uh, uh, images available for you to use. So, uh, so for example, uh, the steps for you to follow would be first install Docker, click, uh, just hop onto this link uh, for all uh, like Windows OSs and Macintosh, and even for Linux is just like a one click download and then it installs. Uh, even on my system, it should be installed right now already. So after you have installed Docker, uh, the next step is to just do a docker pull of an image and it's this step is pretty generic to any image if you would want to use any container even just spin off locally or even in production is just pull that image from a container repository and then run that image that's it uh, pretty two step simple command and um, everything is kind of packaged already in this uh, image so, so yeah within this image uh, both PySpark and Jupyter Notebook is already installed. You just need to run. Basically what happens when you run this, uh, and this uh, would run the whole image, and if you would want to access the whole environment with, with the, the Jupyter, basically Jupyter is hosted on this port. So just do localhost this link, and it kind of opens up and shows a Jupyter environment. And once you, uh, when you go to this Jupyter Notebook, you can create a new notebook and do and import PySpark just to test if PySpark is readily available for you to use. 
All right, moving on to the next step, which is like a Databricks setup. Um, I would just like to do a shout out to my pre previous video. Uh, basically, once you do a Databricks setup, uh, Spark is already readily available for you to use. So this Databricks setup comes preloaded with Spark already. So Databricks is like a unified plot platform which kind of integrates the workflows of a data engineer, data science, or even even a business analyst all together. One place, uh, one common platform for everyone to work on in a single space. And it segregates uh, uh, segregates uh, your uh, execution of code and also provide the flexibility in terms of scale by using clusters. So what happens, you create a Databricks account. Uh, in most of the cases, if you're a data scientist or data engineer, this already comes in by, uh, already set up because uh, the Databricks administrator already should have this in place. But in just in case, if you don't have an a a Databricks account, you can create it for free. I actually did uh, uh, all these steps in my previous video, so maybe I'll just provide a link. So what is gonna happen, you create this account first, and then uh, this Databricks account is kind of linked into the preferred cloud platform you would want. For example, in my video, it was like an AWS account, and it just uh, quickly connects uh, with sharing a few keys. It connects quickly to your account, and then this Databricks platform is kind of allowed to create cluster within your AWS platform. So everything kind of resides in your AWS, the data, the computer and everything. And then you just use this uh, environment to execute your jobs. That's as simple as that. So uh, pretty quickly, pretty straightforward in terms of setting up and using as well. So once you set up, it already has like a Jupyter notebook platform to use. Uh, you just go there and hop in and type in and import SpySpark and it should run very easily because the setup is already done. So once you start a cluster, the, your notebook directly connects with this cluster and you can execute your jobs at scale. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, feel free to check out my previous video. It has uh, the details into doing step-by-step -step installation of the environment, connecting to the, the cluster and executing jobs. Moving on to the next part, uh, that's uh, setting a Spark and Python on a, a bare bones AWS EC2 instance. Uh, I would I would recommend not doing it uh, because there are newer things like Databricks or even SageMaker that's coming in the next step. Uh, this can be avoided because it might take some time for you to install. But the idea is basically once you run an EC2 instance, you create one machine. It's like a virtual machine that uh, AWS provides. Uh, within that machine, you can choose an AMI, basically the 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 image, the OS you would want. Kind of select uh, select uh, the Ubuntu OS. Ubuntu AMI OS and then kind of follow the same steps I mentioned for Ubuntu. Uh, the only difference is uh, here you're setting up locally uh, in setting the uh, we setting in the first step uh, in the first option we were just setting everything locally but now we have a virtual machine which is readily available from AWS so right you don't have to close or anything you just can keep your machine running all the time. And the, once you select the Ubuntu AMI, you just need to follow follow the steps from option one. That's it. So, but I would recommend uh, why doing this. This was one of the preferred option previously, but now it's kind of not. Uh, personally, for me, at least not. All right. Moving on to the next step. Uh, uh, this is like also one of my preferred options of setting up a, a PySpark environment. Uh, very easy to do uh, is using a AWS SageMaker notebooks. In one of my previous videos, I have covered AWS SageMaker notebooks, uh, SageMaker in general in detail, what kind of facility it provides uh, and what kind of things you can do. So basically what happens, uh, uh, AWS SageMaker notebooks is a sub part of SageMaker is like a whole ecosystem. Within that you can spin up uh, notebook instances very easily on a click of a few button. Uh, so basically what you can do, you can go to the, uh, the platform, search for SageMaker, and then click on a notebook instance on the left side. Once you click on it, it kind of gives you an option to create. Once you hop into create, you can select a machine. Basically it allows you give give a machine type. So for example, the, the you can go for the medium tier machine, which is uh, like four gigs of RAM, uh, and you can select the number of storage and like four, four core CPU, something like that. And you also you can spin up like a very powerful instance if you're working with the bigger data. 
click on create instant uh, notebook then it kind of creates the notebook for you so it's going to take like a few minutes after it is done creating the notebook you just can click on the link on open jupiter jupiter notebook within that environment it is very easy to run PySpark. it's a bit tricky uh it's not as straightforward as it's just doing import PySpark, but it's like using sagemaker PySpark within that so you just do use this snippet to kind of run a spark session very easily one of my pre preferred methods but yeah pretty fast and straightforward to use i would and it's also very uh very uh good in terms of the availability because uh, underlying technology is basically easy to instances so once you switch on the instance it's it, it is readily available and it's not it's not going anywhere unless you crash it right so better than using local and also scalable in terms of you just want to switch to a bigger machine and you just don't want any overhead you can just use it as is all right moving on to the next step uh which is uh, using an emr cluster so email is kind of one of the best places uh, to run spark uh, kind of allows you to create cluster basically a set of machines where you can execute your jobs Amazon EMR is like the industry industry leading cloud platform which allows you to process vast amount of data that's what they mention in the documentation so basically you can easy run Apache Spark or Hive or Presto jobs or any other big data jobs uh, on a big cluster because when the data is huge you would uh, tend to execute all these uh, jobs in, in a cluster with multiple machines so the the, the workload is kind of uh, divided between different machines and help you achieve that scale uh, with the click of a few buttons you can just create your own cluster uh, within that cluster you give the cluster a name you provide uh, a few options uh, what kind of jobs you would want to execute it gives you a predetermined environment for example if you want to do pi spark jobs you select the spark environment after you're done selecting the past spike spark environment you have to do you have to select a few other options which is mainly the number of instances you want in the cluster and the type of instances you want in the cluster you can start from like a very small instance like m1 medium or you can just go all the way up to dot ml dot t2x large something like that it kind of allows you to scale uh, at a very high level so after you're done creating creating a cluster then you can create an emr notebook on the side so on the left option there is a, uh, you can just create an you know, emr notebook and from that emr your notebook you can just execute your jobs on an emr cluster and execute all your PySpark jobs from there all right uh, as a final conclusion in terms of the setup i would like to say like a few words like spark is one of the best uh, ways of doing uh, big data processing so PySpark is like the kind of the gateway of using spark uh, and uh, as a data engineer or data scientist uh, it would be very easy for you to switch over from pandas to spark so uh, in terms of in and achieving that scale and then uh, to set up pi spark is sometimes can be pretty tricky hence i've kind of made this tutorial uh, and given all the options uh, available to what i know and you can just choose one of the options and uh, i think that that would be it for you in terms of achieving the scale you can use either databricks or emr cluster uh, which is very quickly and easily which is very quick and easy to set up and then if you want to do something locally i would my, my preferred method would be using docker once docker is installed locally you can just do an image pool and run it uh, and all the in dependencies are kind of installed in the specific package and you don't have to do anything else so i think that's it in terms of this video I hope you guys got value out of this video. Feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It kind of helps with the algorithm. And thanks a lot for watching.